My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching on real estate. And today, what we're going to be talking about is what's going on in the Matsu Valley as far as the residential, the condo, and the multifamily market. Um, we're definitely seeing some pretty um, some interesting numbers. I think you're going to want to want to keep your eyes on, and um, we'll jump into that in just a minute. But before we get started, as always, give this video a like, do subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's go and jump into today's market update looking in the Matsu Valley. Let's take a look at the residential market first. So on the residential side, we're seeing that the inventory did go down, not as drastically as we're seeing over in Anchorage, but the inventory did go down. It was about 242 this time last year, and now it's about 219. So that seems like a pretty, pretty minor drop, doesn't seem like a whole lot, but you know, hold on. The uh, number of properties we usually have on the market about this time, this time of year in the past years has been somewhere closer to about 650. So that's why there's such a feeling of there not being a whole lot of inventory out there right now if you are looking to purchase because there is not. Um, it's down by a third, down to a third of what it usually is for this time of year. So that's a big story right there. Inventory remains pretty low. The next thing that really stands out is that on the residential side, we see that the total number of properties that sold really didn't change that much from the year before. So even though the inventory remains really low, we're seeing that the number of properties went from 174 down to 170. So not a whole lot of difference of what we're seeing there. So that's you know, that's, that's good. Um, I'm seeing that inventory hasn't gotten so compressed and so small like what we've seen in Anchorage that the number of, of sold properties has just drastically cut like pretty much overnight. So that's good. That's uh, that's kind of a healthy sign for now. Um, let's, let's see what the future holds though. Last but not least, the average sold price in the Matsu Valley went from about 343,000 to 355,000. So seeing, you know, kind of seeing a, a little bit more of a moderate increase for the average sold price, you know, that doesn't seem very small, but compared to other parts in the country, you know, a $15,000, $20,000 increase for the average sold price is really a drop in the bucket. Uh, if you think that's bad, go check out. Arizona, Miami, um, any of these other markets where it's just going, just going gangbusters. So, yes, we're seeing an increase for the average sold price for residential properties in the Matsu Valley. The next thing we're going to check out is what's going on in the condo market. So, in the condo market, it's not particularly a big segment of the the Matsu Valley. We've talked about this before. That's not really the reason people move to the Matsu Valley because they're trying to find a condo association. But there's still a still a small market out there. Not a whole lot though, because the total number of active properties as of the month of March was actually three for the entire Matsu Valley. And um, yeah, so not a whole lot of activity going on. Not a whole lot to begin with though. I think it was um, about four or five years ago, we had up to 15 around this time. So for what it's worth, uh, down a lot from where we were before proportionally, but not a whole lot to start with. The next thing we're gonna look at is the total number of units that have actually sold. So in the Matsu Valley, we did see that the total number of, of condos that did sell went from one the year before to three this year. So yeah, awesome. 300% increase from the year before. So good job, Matsu Valley. The next thing we look at for condos in the Matsu Valley is gonna be the number of, or I'm sorry, the average sold price for what we're seeing. So the average sold price went from about 240 for the, the month of March, this time last year to now 220. So that sounds like a drastic, a uh, drastic reduction, keep in, keep in mind, we've got a much smaller pool to work with here. And so we are going to see kind of these drastic ups and downs just depending on what's selling. Um, also, people usually don't buy condos because they want them to appreciate quickly anyway. So honestly, just kind of maintaining their value or slowly going up is definitely a win if it's across the board, and that's definitely what we're seeing year to date. We'll be jumping into the multifamily properties in just a minute, but before we do that, do make sure if you haven't done so already, you go check out my uh, my podcast that I host on the Alaskan journey where I talk to people who have recently moved up to Alaska about their experience of moving up here, what they think of it so far, and this is really gonna be kind of the authentic, uncut, um, behind the scenes discussions of the people who've recently come up here. So do make sure you go check that out. Um, that's gonna be in the, the description section down below. So 
Um, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of today's market update. So on the multifamily properties, what we're seeing is that this time last year, there were 17 properties that were available on the market. Now it's 16. So that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but um, this is absolutely enormous when we kind of take a step back and look at the total number of properties that were available on the market about four or five years ago. Um, back then, this time of year, we'd expect to see somewhere in the 50 to 60 properties to be on the market around this time of year. So, you know, it's a bit of a decrease compared to the year before. It's a big decrease though, compared to a couple of years ago. The next thing looking at the multifamily market that we notice is that the total number of properties um, that actually sold in this market during that time period went from 14 the year before to nine this past year. And that's not just not just that month, we see really every other month so far this year, we've seen a decrease on the number of sold properties. So we can ex expect to see that just because the, the inventory has gotten so compressed on the multifamily side that uh, you can't have it that compressed and expect to keep pace forever indefinitely with what we sold in the year before when there were more options available. So that and not a whole lot of investors are really wanting to let go of their investment properties, especially in the Matsu Valley where the average, um, average rent has gone up by approximately 30%. So investment properties, if you bought out there a couple of years ago, um, are looking better and better just because the rents are going up as the population moves more and more out to the Matsu Valley. The next thing that we see, and the reason that I know everybody actually checks in here is the average sold price. So the average sold price went from about 400 and 65,000 this time last year to about 525,000 for this past year. Now, as always, do keep in mind that this does include all the multifamily properties from the little, little duplex all the way up to the big commercial 30plex property. So, you know, that's still great and it's what we would expect to see with the cost of rents going up. Multifamily properties are more valuable right at the moment and those who are trying to, you know, just cash out and be done, been waiting for that moment. You know, this is definitely the, the time for them to be doing that. And if you are considering jumping into it, then, you know, rents are, are definitely go, going to go a long way. Just be really careful you don't um, purchase something with the assumption that rents are always going to be at the rate that they are currently at. Make sure that you have a pretty healthy margin for error in case, you know, this, uh, this doesn't become the new norm and rents do start to, to take a bit of a decline in the future here. So across the board, that's what we're seeing on the multifamilies, on the residential, you know, that's about what we, would, what we would expect, kind of more than normal. We're not seeing a huge change as far as the inventory that's available. Now, over in Anchorage, we saw a drastic cut and hopefully that doesn't, uh, doesn't happen in the Matsu Valley because more and more of the population is moving out here to the Matsu Valley. And um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, there's only so much housing to go around. So um, demand is gonna remain remain pretty high. Um, for the condos, not a whole lot, a whole lot of different things there. It's kind of always a smaller pool of, um, of data to work with. So I sure hope this was useful for you. Um, you know, if you're looking to sell, it's a great time to do it. The only issue is you have to find somewhere afterwards. If you're looking to buy, I know everyone kind of gets sticker shock right now. I'm looking for some for another property and I'm getting a little sticker shock. But the fact of the matter is this is probably not going to be going anywhere in any going away anytime in the near future. People who are saying, oh, well, I'm waiting for the market to crash. You're going to be waiting a long time. Um, this is realistically probably just the new normal. Um, the increase in prices are not, not because of bad industry practices where prices were artificially inflated because standards were low. So standards are where they need to be. So it's not like back in 2008, 2009, the issue is just a supply and demand issue right now. And that's probably not going to change anytime soon. Matter of fact, it could get worse because the people who have bought recently at a really low interest rate. You, and they normally would be looking at selling, you know, two, three, four years. And that time period, interest rates might be much, much higher. And they might be, well, why would I move at this point? I've got this super low interest rate. I would just be paying more money for less house. So why would I even move? So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. If you think you're going to be smart and uh, just wait out the market, um, based off of everything I'm seeing, I am breaking my neck 
trying to get out there and get under contract with as much real estate as I can before prices increase even more. So I sure hope this was useful for you. If it has, make sure you give this video a like and we'll see you next time.